we've seen that the acidity of a molecule depends upon the stability of the conjugate base. In this video, we're going to see how the conjugate base is stabilized by the concept of induction. So here we have three carboxylic acids, and we're going to start with the carboxylic acid on the left, which is acetic acid. This is the acidic proton in acetic acid, and that proton has a pKa value of approximately 4.76. We move to chloroacetic acid. Once again, this is the acidic proton. The pKa value decreases to about 2.85. And then finally, we have dichloroacetic acid. With this being the acidic proton, the pKa value has decreased even further to about 1.48. So we know that the lower the pKa value, the more acidic the molecule is. And so therefore, as we move to the right here, we are increasing in acidity. So increasing in acidity. Therefore, dichloroacetic acid is the most acidic, which means that dichloroacetic acid must have the most stable conjugate base. So let's look at the conjugate bases for these acids, and we'll start with the acetic acid molecule over here on the left. So once it donates that proton, right, we are left with the conjugate base. So we lose a proton, we lose a hydrogen with a positive charge, and therefore our oxygen has a negative charge on it like that. I'm not going to draw in lone pairs of electrons in this video because I think that would confuse the point that I'm trying to make. So please watch previous videos to see where those lone pairs of electrons are. So with a negative one formal charge on our conjugate base, we know that that negative one formal charge can be delocalized by resonance. So we've seen that in an earlier video. So because of this electronegative oxygen up here, we actually get that negative charge delocalized or spread out over this portion of the molecule because of the resonance structures that we can draw. And the resulting resonance hybrid has that negative charge delocalized over this portion. And so since we have some stabilization of the conjugate base, acetic acid is able to donate a proton in solution. So it's relatively acidic. If we look at the conjugate base to chloroacetic acid, so let's go ahead and draw the conjugate base for the next molecule here. The negative one formal charge would be right here. And the only difference is the presence of this chlorine in the molecule. So once again, we could think about the resonance structure for this conjugate base. And so some of that negative charge is delocalized or spread out over this portion of the molecule, which stabilizes the conjugate base. However, we also have the presence of an electronegative atom, this chlorine right here. And so this chlorine is more electronegative than the carbon that it's bonded to right here. So it is going to pull those two electrons in, the, in that bond closer to itself. And so we call this the inductive effect. So we covered this in the video on electronegativity. And so those electrons are pulled closer to the electronegative atom. And therefore, those electrons are pulled away from this carbon, meaning this carbon is partially positive. And so this, this electronegative chlorine, we say, is electron withdrawing. It can withdraw some electron density away from this carbon. And therefore, it can also withdraw some of the negative charge from this portion of the molecule. And so we can delocalize that negative charge over this portion of the molecule, too, due to the presence of this electron withdrawing group. That stabilizes the conjugate base even more. And since we have a more stable conjugate base, that is what allows chloroacetic acid to be an even stronger acid than acetic acid. So the pulling of that electron density, we call that induction. And so this inductive effect lowers the pKa value for chloroacetic acid. Let's go ahead and look at the conjugate base to dichloroacetic acid. So once again, we go ahead and show the negative one formal charge here. This time we have two electronegative atoms, right? We have two electron withdrawing groups. So not only do we have the resonance stabilization, right? Stabilizing this um, conjugate base, we also have the presence of two electronegative atoms. Each one has an inductive effect. Each one is withdrawing some electron density, and therefore this negative charge is spread out even more in this conjugate base. And so this conjugate base is the most stable due to the fact that it has the most electron withdrawing groups in the molecule. Since this is the most stable conjugate base, that means that dichloroacetic acid is the most acidic, and we can see that reflected in those pKa values. So this inductive effect turns out to be distance dependent. So the closer your electronegative atoms are to the negative charge in your conjugate base, the more of an effect um, it will have. And so we can see that reflected in these two acids right here. So on the left, we have three chlorobutanoic acid. 
So if this carbon is carbon 1, this carbon would be carbon 2, and then carbon 3. So we have 3 chlorobutanoic acid. The acidic proton would once again be this proton right here on this carboxylic acid. And it has a pKa value of approximately 4.05. If we look over here on the right, this would be 2 chlorobutanoic acid. So this would be carbon 1, and this would be carbon 2 right here. And 2 chlorobutanoic acid, with this being the acidic proton, has an even lower value for its pKa of about 2.86. The only difference between these two molecules is the location of the electronegative atom. So over here on the right, the chlorine is coming off of carbon too. And once again, the inductive effect is distance dependent, which means that once you lose this proton, Right, and have a negative one formal charge, the fact that this chlorine is relatively close to this negative one formal charge has a greater effect when it when it stabilizes the conjugate base than the example on the left, because in the example on the left, the chlorine would be further away from where this negative charge would be once this proton is donated. So the inductive effect is distance dependent. The closer the electronegative atom or the electron withdrawing group, the more of an effect it has on the pKa. Let's look at some more examples here. Let's look at some more carboxylic acids. and. Over here on the left, we have propanoic acid. So this is the acidic proton. And you can see the pKa is approximately 4.87. Here is propenoic acid, with this being the acidic proton. The pKa value has decreased slightly. And then finally, propinoic acid, with this as the acidic proton. The pKa value goes all the way down to 1.84. So once again, as you move to the right, you get a decrease in the pKa values. And therefore, you get an increase in the acidity of those carboxylic acids. So propinoic acid is the most acidic out of those three. We can explain that in terms of the stability of the conjugate bases. So let's go ahead and draw the conjugate bases for all three of these carboxylic acids. So this would be the negative one formal charge. And on the next conjugate base, all right, we have a negative one formal charge here. This time we have a double bond present in the group on the left. And then finally, we go ahead and draw the conjugate base for propinoic acid, so negative one formal charge. And this time we have a triple bond right here. So let me go ahead and change that. All right, so we have a triple bond for the conjugate base like that. So let's analyze these groups. So if we look over here on the left, uh, for this group we have two sp3 hybridized carbons. So let's go ahead and write sp3 hybridized carbons right here. And for this group right here, we see sp2 hybridized carbons. And then finally, we have sp hybridized carbons for this triple bond right here. Now it turns out that sp hybridized carbons are more electronegative than sp2. So we go ahead and write sp hybridized carbons are more electronegative than sp2 hybridized carbons. And sp2 hybridized carbons are more electronegative than sp3 hybridized carbons. There are many, many ways to calculate the electronegativity. And there, and and out of all the ways that are done, all the ways that are done agree with this general trend. So sp hybridized carbons are the most electronegative. Therefore, we think about them as being electron withdrawing groups. And so therefore, having an indu inductive effect upon the stability of the conjugate base. So if sp hybridized carbons are the most electronegative, they are going to withdraw some electron density this way. Right? And so once again, you can think about the conjugate base as having those that negative charge delocalized over this portion of the molecule due to resonance. And due to the presence of this electron withdrawing group, once again, withdrawing some electron density, that negative charge is spread out over this portion of the molecule as well, increasing the stability of this conjugate base, and therefore increasing the acidity of the propinoic acid molecule. So it's not just it's not just atoms that we tend to think about as being electronegative. You can think about this in terms of hybridization as well. Let's look at one more example. And we've been talking about electron withdrawing groups. And in this last example, we're going to see um, an electron donating group, which of course would have the opposite effect upon the conjugate base. And so here we have two more carboxylic acids. And so uh, it turns out that acetic acid is the most acidic out of these two. So this molecule on the right is the most acidic 
And so once again, it has to do with these groups that are coming off of the carboxylic acid, right? So we can think about a methyl group over here on the right on acetic acid, and over here on the left, we can think about this as being our tert butyl group. So now we're going to think about alkyl groups in terms of their stability. So let's go ahead and draw the conjugate bases for these molecules, and then we'll analyze those alkyl groups here. So we have a negative one formal charge, and then we have this tert butyl group coming off on this side, and then for for acetic acid, once again, negative one formal charge and just a, a methyl group right here. So when we think about these alkyl groups, it turns out alkyl groups are electron donating. And so the more substituted your alkyl groups, the slightly more electron donating they are. So if we look at over here on the left, right? This is very substituted alkyl group, this tert butyl group right here. It's a little bit electron donating. So you could think about this as giving a tiny bit of negative charge. And since like charges repel, right? So this negative charge would repel this negative charge over here. That would destabilize this conjugate base. And since this is a destabilized conjugate base, that would of course decrease the acidity of this molecule right here. When we study the acetate polyatomic ion, once again, it does have an alkyl group, but it's not as substitute as the alkyl group on the left, so it's not quite as electron donating. And since it's not quite as electron donating, this is not quite as destabilized. So this conjugate base is not quite as destabilized, therefore it is a little bit more stable than the example on the left. And so since this conjugate base is a little bit more stable, that's the reason for the increased acidity of the molecule. So to sum up, you can think about alkyl groups as being somewhat electron donating, and that will of course have a slight effect upon the pKa value.